Okay, so behind me are 12 different webcams ranging from $1 to $1,000 in price. I'm gonna test out a webcam setup that costs $1,000 and we're also gonna look at $350 webcam and then see what $180 gets you today and then some of the most common sub $100 webcams and so much more. But before I show you what it's like to stream or record from the best webcams, I'm gonna also show you the cheapest webcam in the world. Okay, so this is the XZ004 webcam. It's from Wish.com. Back in December 22, I actually paid $3.20 for it. It's a little bit more than a dollar, but I could now probably maybe get a dollar for it if I tried to resell it. This isn't gonna be good. You're probably asking, did it work though? Well, kind of, let's check it out. Okay, so this is the default image and built-in microphone from my Wish.com camera. Okay, now you might be thinking, was I able to use my expert webcam capabilities having tested more than 100 of them to make it look okay? Well, you can be the judge. So first, I changed into a light-colored shirt, as you can see here, to really trick the auto exposure in order to darken the image. Now, here it is again with the black shirt. And now back to this one. So now just a note here, this camera didn't work with any Windows webcam controls. I had to basically MacGyver the camera and also change my shirt in this case because the auto exposure still worked and I had to use Adobe Podcast to fix the audio. So it ended up better than probably the majority of the camera setups that I see on my Microsoft Teams calls every day for work. But would I recommend it? I would definitely say no. Okay, so let's move on to cameras that I do recommend at various price points from about $20 all the way up to $1,000. So the next webcam goes for about $20 to $25 at the moment, depending on where you buy it. It's the Lenovo Essential or 300 FHD webcam. Okay, so this is the Lenovo Essential FHD webcam. It's a two megapixel webcam. And by the way, I've tested around 100 different webcams and I can tell you of the different ones that I've tested at the ultra budget level, this is definitely my favorite one. Now the only downside, or maybe it's an upside depending on your point of view, is that you need to use the Windows built-in camera settings to adjust it. So for Mac, you would need to install a UVC settings app. Now the next jump though takes us from about $60 back in time, also all the way back to 2012, and it's the Logitech C920. Was it still any good more than 12 years later? Okay, so this is the Logitech C920. What I've set now here is the brightness a little bit down from 128 to 104. But I've got to say the C920 still holds its own today. The only thing that I can really fault it on is the lack of color tint control. So if you have blue RGB background lights like I do, your face either ends up kind of yellow or it ends up looking purple if you correct it. Okay, so the next price tier takes us out to about $100. And my favorite here is actually the Razer Keo Pro. And I actually only paid about $60 for it last year on Black Friday, so you might wanna wait for that date if you're interested in this camera. Let's take a look. All right, so this is a side-by-side -side comparison of both the Razer Keo Pro Ultra at 1080p 60 and the Razer Keo Pro on the right-hand side just to see how close they look with the normal tuning that I would apply to a web camera with my kind of darker and RGB bluish background behind me. Okay, so now we're moving into the more crowded space of around $130, and there are two different webcams that I like here. And the first one is the original Logitech Brio 4K. Then I've got the new Obspot Meet 2. So let's first have a look at the Logitech Brio 4K. Okay, so this is the Logitech Brio 4K. and this Now the next one is the Obspot Meet 2 that was just recently released. It's also a 4K camera for $130. Okay, so this is the Obspot Meet 2 camera in 4K with its default image and its default audio. So you can see what it looks like and also hear what it sounds like from its onboard microphones. I got now this one's pretty respectable for its price, but note that 4K doesn't always mean a higher quality image. So right now the footage that you're seeing that I'm capturing is actually 1080p at 60 frames per second, but is it worse than the 4K webcams that we just saw? Probably not. So the next jump up is from 130 to $150, and here I've got one camera that's my favorite, and that is the Insta360 Link 2C, which was recently released. Let's take a look at that one. Okay, so this is the Insta360 Link 2C. This is what it looks like out of the box with out of the box settings. 
and what the audio sounds like from its microphone with out-of-the-box settings just so you can see what it looks like and also hear what it sounds like. Okay, so the next jump takes us to $180 and you can also get a 4K camera, but with a motorized gimbal, meaning that it can automatically track you as you move around your room. This one is the Obspot Tiny2 Lite. But now you can see what the Obspot Tiny2 Lite looks like and also hear what the Obspot Tiny2 Lite Sounds like. So the one thing I gotta say about the Obspot cameras, the more recent ones, is that they have probably the best, or my favorite at least, out of the box image default settings, where I don't really need to tweak them or tune them, and the skin tones and the contrast and everything just look really good without adjusting the image. Okay, so the next jump has us going to around $200, and here I've got two different cameras that I like, and the first one's a static camera from Logitech. It's pretty new, it's called the MX Brio. For business, it's called the 700 series Brio. That is again a static camera, and from a gimbal perspective, you can get also, and these are both 4K, you can get the Insta360 Link 2 as another choice at that same price point. All right, so this is the MX Brio with tuned settings in Logitune. And that's not bad, but I gotta say the colors are a bit oversaturated by default. That blue behind me looks super blue, so you really need to dial those down a bit. Otherwise, it's a nice image. Okay, so I don't have the Insta360 Link 2, but in terms of reference image, it's exactly the same in terms of sensor size and optics as the Insta360 Link 2C, but of course it has a two axis gimbal for motorized auto tracking. All right, so now that should have taken me to the next big price jump to $300, but now you can get the camera that I was going to uh, show there and what I paid for $300, by the way, at the time, the Insta360 Link Generation 1, you can get that for $180 in the US at least, and this one is a really good deal. So it's the only gimbal webcam with a three axis gimbal or three axis movement, which means it can level out images and also film a vertical video without having to mount the camera at a 90 degree angle in order to do it like you would with the other gimbal cameras. Camera. So these are all the default settings for the Insta360 Link. This is the onboard microphone. And this is a really great camera once you dial in the image. Otherwise, it's a little bit milky and kind of under contrasty, and you need to give it a bit more color, a bit more uh, saturation and pop. So the next camera is the Obspot Tiny 2. Not the light version that we just saw, but the Tiny 2. Now this one jumps us up to around $340 or so. And at that price point, what you're actually getting is better software that does a lot more like desk mode and whiteboard mode. It will track your hand, for example, things that you cannot do with the Obspot Tiny 2 Lite. So let's take a look at that one. Okay, so this is the Obspot Tiny PTZ camera. Again, I'm recording uh, at 4K in this case. Okay, so those are the normal cameras, but what do you get for $1,000? Well, you're looking at that right now. This happens to be a Sony A6100. I paid about $600 for that camera, just as the camera body. The lens that you're looking at is the Viltrox 23mm f1.4 autofocus lens that I bought on eBay for about $220. Then you need a capture card, and I recommend the Elgato CamLink 4K that I'm using, and I paid $97 for mine. And you'll also need what's called a dummy battery, so it's always got current going to it, and you have to recharge batteries. These go for about $25 making that a total of $942 before sales tax or about $1,041 total with the 10.5% sales tax that I pay. Okay, so do I have buyer's remorse in terms of spending around $1,000 for my daily webcam setup that I use for work? I also film my YouTube videos with it. And I think even the best 4K webcams don't come close to what I'm doing right now, which is a 1080p 60 FPS image Yes, it will film 4K 30 as well. And I can truly say that I've tried all the best webcams and anything that will film a clean HDMI image at 1080p or better will pretty much blow away any 4K webcam that you can buy on the market today, at least for all the ones that I've tested and I've tested a lot of them. Okay, so of the 12 cameras that you saw and also given their price points, let me know what you think was the best value for money in terms of the 12 different cameras that I showed. And of course, check out my channel for deeper dives into all these different cameras. Also, be sure to subscribe for more content like this, and we'll see you soon.